What is happening? Hmm? You look, you all look like you want to go to the grave. Hmm? Looks like you have lost your interest in practice. Does it mean you want to stay on in the hamster wheel? Yeah. You think it's so much fun to go round and round and round without end? A roller coaster going up and down? I mean, we need some motivation. Huh? Ah, oh, it's so difficult. Oh, I don't feel well. Oh, it's too hot. Oh, it's too cold. It's never potty potty. It's never just right. I mean, it's your life, yeah? I mean, you are responsible for whatever you do. Every action, every word, Every movement, you're responsible. Yeah? And the intention that forms the kama, yeah? the intention to move, the intention to do this, the intention yeah? not to do this. Yeah? It's all kama. Yeah? And you do it today, and tomorrow it's easier to follow the track, yeah? and then you're in a slum. Yeah? And how to get out of it? It's too difficult, so you stay on. Oh, it's so difficult. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Self-pity is the kilesas, yeah. Know that. Hmm? Don't think that next life is better. Yeah? Just the way, same way, you know, it is now. And we have become monks. For what? For being a monk? Hmm? For living a comfortable life? Or did we ordain in order to get out of this samsara? Get out of this roller coaster? Or are we going to ordain to get out of the roller coaster? Or are we just don't like the world as it is now? Yeah, and uh, becoming a monk seems to be a nice option, yeah? more quiet option, not so stressful. That's not that's not the reason why we should ordain. Yeah? The reason, the only reason, why we ordain is to get out. Yeah? But when I look at you, you know, I mean, I don't see this effort yeah? that is necessary. And if you remember correctly, you know, effort is one of the enlightenment factors. Hmm? Effort, determination, hmm? pity, samadhi, hmm? samadhi, samadhi. Hmm? Where is the samadhi? Huh? Where is the quietude? Hmm? Where is that place, you know, where thinking stops? where we get a rest from the I, from the ego, from the constantly wanting this and wanting that, not liking this, not liking that. Huh? It's also an enlightenment factor, samadhi. Yeah? Don't forget it. Yeah? It's stressed often, samadhi. And especially samadhi that develops the sati. Yeah? The sati that we need. Yeah? I mean, but you, you like to run through, through the dark, yeah? Because we don't see anything, yeah? We don't have to pay attention to anything because all around us is dark. Yeah? <clears throat> sati is the light that shines light into the dark. And wherever Sati shines, yeah, the darkness has to go away. And the darkness is avicca. Yeah? The light is dhamma. Hmm? What are you waiting for? Hmm? 
Are you waiting for a better occasion? Are you waiting until you're healthy again? Are you waiting? Yeah? For what? Yeah? Why don't you do it right now? The longer you wait, the more difficult it is you know, to put ourselves together or to get our act together and start practicing. The deeper we drive the car into the mud, the more difficult it is, is it you know, to pull it out. If you don't have a determination or if you can't gather determination today, tomorrow it will be more difficult. And because tomorrow it's more difficult, huh? and we say, oh, it's too difficult, wait until it comes back. Yeah? That is not the road to progress, that is the, the, that is the road to regress. But it looks like, you know, you, you enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, here it is, solitude. Yeah. You enjoy the solitude. And why bother, you know, to practice earnestly? I'm, I, I don't mean, you know, when I say practice, yeah? I mean, you probably sit, you know, you probably walk, but you don't practice. Yeah? You don't stay put with the Buddha, or you don't stay put with the breath, or, or you don't do your investigation. Yeah? <clears throat> That's yeah, what I mean. You don't practice. Not that you're not formally practicing, but you, you don't practice with this determination, effort. Yeah? I want to get to know it, you know? I want to get, you know, I want to quiet down my mind. Yeah? I want to dig, you know, and dig with the Buddha, or dig with the breath. Yeah? And I don't care, you know, whatever is happening. I don't care, you know, if there is pain, I don't care if there is there's fear, you know, I just want to dig. Yeah? I just want to stay put with the Buddha, or put, uh, put with the breath. Yeah? That's all what should us interest. Yeah? If you don't have this kind of determination, there's no progress to be made. Yeah? You constantly hang up in the in the past. Yeah, yesterday it was much better. Maybe tomorrow is better. Yeah, huh? or we hang up in the future. Yeah? Why? Yeah? How often have you thought this thought about the future? How often have you thought the, these thoughts about the past? Yeah. And why do you still like to think about it? Yeah? I mean, by now you should have noticed, you know, you can't change anything by thought. Yeah? You cannot change, yeah? You cannot change your meditation practice just by thought. Yeah? You have to sit down and actually do something. Yeah? That means returning back to the Buddha, returning back to the breath, or doing your investigation. So what is happening? Yeah? I mean, if you would, yeah? if you would really do, in the evening, a daily reflection, you would see yeah? how much you're in a slump, how, much, how little determination you have, and how little effort you put. Yeah? And, and you would notice that your, your thoughts are constantly hanging there, yeah? and hanging there, yeah? hanging in the future, hanging in the past. Yeah? Painting a picture, yeah? tomorrow it's nice, yeah? yesterday it was much better and today is bad. I mean, that doesn't, this picture doesn't help us. Yeah? Now it is the way it is now, yeah? and it is our reaction to it that makes it really bad. Our reaction to the present situation. Yeah? We don't like it. Yeah? We find it difficult. Yeah? So, and that yeah? is the second noble truth. Yeah? Desire. Yeah? Wanting something to change. Yeah? Change it to the better. Yeah? And that creates dukkha. So we should have a lot of dukkha, but you don't notice it. You just go from one place to the next, yeah? 
not to, in order not to see the dukkha, or do one thing after the other, in order not to see the dukkha. Building this, building that, doing this, doing that. Yeah? So you can't see the dukkha. Yeah? Because if you put yourself in a situation where you just stick to one, you know, to stick to the uh, meditation or sitting practice or stick to the walking practice, you would notice the dukkha. Yeah? But you run away from the dukkha. When do you want to end running away from the dukkha? And you probably don't notice even that there is dukkha. Because you don't notice your thoughts, you don't notice your desire. Completely in the dark about yourself. I mean, we should investigate this, yeah? We should sit so long, you know, until we really investigate what is, it, what is it driving up, yeah? And if we need to do something, is it really worthwhile? What kind of effect does it have on us? Yeah? That's where, where, medita- where the reflection comes in handy, yeah? We see it. We see it so clearly. That's why we don't want to do it, yeah? Or we forget it. In the reflection, we would so easily see how we constantly run away from dukkha, from unpleasant situations. Too hot, too cold, yeah, too wet, yeah, too much restlessness, and so on. Always dukkha. Yeah. I mean, how often did I tell you to investigate these things? What is Dukkha Veda now? Or painful feelings? Yeah, when they arise in sitting meditation, investigate. What is pain? Yeah? Investigate. What is fear? Investigate all these yeah, <clears throat> feelings or moods that come up. Yeah? What is illness? Yeah? Investigate it. Oh, no. I mean, I don't have energy. Yeah? I mean, I heard that so often. I don't have energy. Yeah? What is not having, how does it feel like not having energy? Investigate it, go into it. Yeah? See it. Yeah? Put your attention on it yeah? and find the spot where it comes from. Yeah? The body is the body. Yeah? I mean, maybe the body doesn't have energy. Yeah? But the chitta has, in, I mean, has all the energy it wants. But we have not done the separation of the body and the chitta yet. So, so we think the body and the chitta are one and the same thing. Yeah? When, the, when the body doesn't have energy, oh, I don't have energy. Yeah? Then we think, you know, the chitta has no energy. That's not true. Yeah? I mean, when the car runs out of gas, does it mean, you know, that, that the driver cannot get out of his car and walk? Yeah? Because he has no energy, he has no fuel. Yeah? Do you really think that? You really believe that? Huh? What does the driver normally do, yeah, if the car stops? Well, he gets out of it, yeah, and either runs to the next gas station to bring some new gas, yeah, and fill it up, yeah, and then use the car again. No, but you, you're just like the driver sitting, oh, I have no gas. Huh? Let's hope, you know, somebody comes by and brings me some gas. Huh? Somebody comes by and brings me some energy. No, the chitta and the body are two different things. Yeah. I mean, b- b- why do we do body investigation? Yeah? What is the body? What is feeling? Anicca, anatta, tukka. Anicca, it's impermanent. It arises and ceases. Feeling arises and ceases. So they are not us. Yeah? Anatta, it's not me, it's not mine, it doesn't belong to me. Yeah? And dukkha, it's full of dukkha. Dissatisfaction. Yeah? Unpleasantness. These are the three characteristics yeah, that, that stretches through the whole universe. Or they cover the whole universe. Everything that exists within this universe has these three characteristics. Our chitta doesn't, because it doesn't belong to this universe. Yeah? It, it has been caught up in this universe and 
It's so stupid to believe that it is this universe or part of this universe. Huh? And in terms of us, it is the body. Oh, it's the body. Yeah? The body hurts. No. What is, what is pain? Investigate it. Get down to it. Yeah? Get to the root of the problem. You are not the body. Use it. I can't meditate because the body is sick. No, of course you can meditate because the chitta is meditating, not the body. The body is completely quiet, completely calm. Yeah? Or it should be. Yeah? The chitta is meditating, not the body. Yeah? But these things you, you seem not to be able to understand. I mean, you all read the biography, you know, of Lumpuman, you know, well, what did he say to this one bhikkhu, yeah? The sick. Don't give in to the kilesas. Huh? The kilesas are the ones, you know, who try to make or make us believe that we are the body. But we are not. Very clearly. You can clearly see it if you go into it. What is this body? Yeah? It's a piece of skin? Yeah? Or a heap of shit covered up in a piece of skin? That's a body. Open it up and see it for yourself. What is there that you like? Yeah? What, what, what is in there? Yeah? Do you like the blood that is in there? Do you like the pools? Do you like the... <clears throat> the food that is in the stomach, yeah? Do you like the intestines more or the heart better yeah? or the brain, yeah? Look at the brain, yeah? Take it out of your head, you know, and then put it into your hands and look at it. Is that what you like? Huh? Look at it. Huh? And how can you be the thing that you look at? Huh? And who is the one who looks at, observes it? Who is the one who observes pain? Who is the one who knows the pain? Who is the one who knows fear? It cannot be us. Yeah? Fear cannot be us. Huh? Body cannot be us. Huh? What is there? Yeah? A heap of shit, you know, wrapped up, you know, in the skin. It's just, that's why I like the, the, the simile, you know, I mean, Take, take, your, take your nice <clears throat> pillow that you put your head on and open it up, yeah? Oh, it's so soft, why should I open it up, huh? Why? It's nice, it's comfortable. That's what we think. Huh? The moment you open up, you see it is full of shit, yeah? I mean, you never put your head on, on it again. It's the same thing with the body. Yeah? I mean, open it up, you know, remove the skin and then look in the mirror and see if you still like it. Yeah? What do you see? Yeah? And then suddenly, you know, where's the difference between this body and that body? Yeah? Between me and them. Where's the difference? When you take the skin off. Yeah? Or even go down, you know, even go down further down yeah? to the skeletons. Yeah? Where's the difference? Look at the, this skeleton and look at that skeleton. Yeah? Look, look at them how they move. Yeah? Look at them how they eat. Yeah? What's it? Yeah? There's no difference. Yeah? The skin makes all or the form makes all the appearance. Yeah? And we go only for the appearance. We don't go for the inside. I mean, then just take the skin and blow it up with air, you know? But we need all these internal organs, you know, to, to move it around, yeah? To think, to feel, yeah? to touch, to hear, to see, to talk, yeah? 
That's what, that's what we think. Yeah? Without a body, we still can see, we still can think, yeah? we still can feel. Yeah? It's not really necessary to have a body. Yeah? We are trapped in this body, and you don't, you really don't understand it. Yeah, you st- you constantly confuse it. Yeah, being you. Yeah. So investigate what is tiredness. I mean, how often do I say these? Huh? How often have I said it? Investigate what is tiredness, investigate what is pain, investigate what is fear. How does it feel like? Yeah? And then there is subject and object. Yeah? The object is the fear or the tiredness or the not well-being, whatever, it, whatever there is. Yeah? Or it's a dullness or it's... or it's a bad mood, or it's anger, huh? or it's greed, or it's lust. Yeah? We can all investigate these things. They are not me, they are not mine, they don't belong to me. And there are lots of dukkha. Yeah? Look at it, there are dukkha. Yeah? But you don't want to investigate, you don't want to see the truth for it. Yeah? You just want to assume, yeah, it's nice, yeah. You look around at your body, you know, you look at, around at the skin, yeah, or the skin back, yeah, and, and, and think, oh, it is nice, yeah. With all the hair on top of it, yeah. With the hair of the head, with the hair of the body, yeah. With the teeth and with the nails. And whenever we take off, these things, from the body, it becomes disgusting. The hair in the drainage mixed together with soap, we find it utterly disgusting. The food that comes out, we find it, we call it shit. When it, when it goes into the body, we call it food. When it comes out, we call it shit. Why? Whatever comes out of the body, be it sweat, be it shit, be it piss, be it whatever, yeah, be it poos, yeah, we dislike. Be it the hair of the head, we dislike. We don't like the hair, our own hair. We don't like, you know, to clean the drainage from our own hair. Why? We don't like our hair, you know, go into our soup. We find it disgusting. Why? Investigate it. Find the source of it, find the cause of it. And of course, when you start to investigate the body, or the more you, start, you investigate the body, and the more you see the truth, the more anger arises. But it's not your anger. So we can investigate anger. What is anger? How does it feel like? How does it compare to dissatisfaction? How does it compare to that feeling? How does it compare to fear? How does it compare? What's the difference between this feeling and that feeling? I mean, these things are all things, <clears throat> all topics for investigation. Go and, 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 and take your body apart, yeah? Cut off, yeah? Cut off bit by bit and, and put it in front of you, yeah? so that you are able to see. And do it as real as you can. Put, put all the bits and pieces. Yeah? I mean, you can do it detailed, you can call it cause. Yeah? I mean, you cut off the foot, the right foot, the left foot, you know, put it in front of you. Huh? <clears throat> and then the torso. Yeah? And then the arms or the fingers and the hands and so on, and put it all in front of you. Heap it up, you know, put it orderly or just throw it onto a heap yeah? and see all of it. Yeah? When you cut it off, you know, look at it, you know, look at the, <clears throat> at the place where you cut it off. Yeah, look at it. You know, there are bones, you know, there are blood vessels and there's meat and, or flesh and so on. Yeah? Look at it. And then look at it, and look what is wrapped around, you know, it's the skin. Yeah? See it. Yeah? 
and see how the hair grows out of the skin. Yeah? See how the hair grow, uh, the, how the nails grow out of the skin. See how the t- teeth grow out of the bones. Look at it. I mean, who likes to have something like that? Yeah? I mean, I often call the body, you know, a factory that turns everything that is beautiful into something that is disgusting. And it brings us so much dukkha. And you don't see it. You just, yeah, that's life. It, you just comply with the fact that it's dukkha, yeah? yeah? That's just the way it is, yeah? I mean, I can't cha- change anything, yeah? If you, if you think you can't change anything, then you are in the wrong place here, yeah? I mean, the Lord Buddha didn't teach us that we can't change anything, yeah? We have to understand, yeah? We have to understand the nature of the body. We have to understand the nature of greed and hate. We don't want to. Yeah? There's this resistance. Yeah? What is resistance? Yeah, investigate. What is resistance? If you see it, if you feel it, what is resistance? How does it feel like? <clears throat> How does it compare, you know, to other feelings? How does it compare resistance and dullness? How does it compare? Yeah? What's the difference in these feelings? I mean, investigation is the is the way to, to develop wisdom. Yeah? And sati is the key, you know, that shines a light on this feeling, yeah? or on the body. Open it up. Can you see? Yeah? Go into your head. Take out the eyeballs. Yeah? Open the lips. Yeah? Hmm? Cut down the lower jaws, you know, and then go inside. Yeah? Look. Yeah? Look at the throat. Yeah? Or go up to the na- nose, yeah? And then go into the brain. Hmm? And then the skull. And then, and then the skin of the head, yeah? And then see how all this hair grows up. Hmm? Or go down deep, yeah? Down the throat, yeah? <clears throat> to the stomach, yeah? Investigate what you've eaten this morning. Hmm? Look at it, how it is, yeah? You, you, you've got the experience <clears throat> because there are so many times that you threw up, yeah? You threw up the food that you've eaten, yeah? And did you find it interesting or did you find it disgusting? <clears throat> did you want to eat it again? Why not? It just came out of the sto- just came out of the body. I mean, why, why not put it back into the body? What? Huh? Cut it up, the body. Understand the nature of the body. Investigate first the outside and then the inside. Yeah? Investigate the skin, because it, it, it's a big deceiver. The skin is the big deceiver. It shows us an appearance that and we, we just go for this appearance. We don't like to see what is underneath. Yeah? We don't like to see, you know, what makes this body move, or what makes this body tick. We don't want to investigate it because we'd like to hang up in the future and in the past. Yeah? How is this working? Hmm? What is the body? Which part of the body is the body? Take it out yeah? until there's nothing left. Yeah? And you see everything in front of you, every part of it. Yeah? And then put it back on. Yeah? And then put it out again and put it back on. Yeah? Or open it up and close it. Open it up again and close it again. Yeah? And you see there are different feelings connected with it. When you open it up, you know, feeling of irritation, feeling of 
Disgust comes up when you close it up, you know, feeling of lust comes up, or greed comes up, or desire, whatever. And then you open it up again, and then it, and then it changes into something unpleasant, unpleasant feeling, yeah, or a feeling of anger. And then you close it up again, you know, and then it changes into a feeling of lust. Yeah? Then you open it up again and it changes into a feeling of anger. So w- w- what is going on? But you're not interested to know what is going on, you're just interested to run your programs. Huh? I mean, that is, yeah? when I talk about the inner world, I mean, there's so much to, there's so much to discover, there's so much to investigate, yeah? and it's so much interesting. But you, you, you just like to hang up in, in, the, in the thoughts of the future and the past. Yeah? No matter what color the thoughts are. Yeah? Now I have to do this, I have to do that. Then, yeah, I mean, there's no end to it. If our thoughts would be, oh, I have to investigate pain, I have to investigate anger, I have to investigate lust, yeah. How do they feel now it's different and so on and so on. Yeah? Then we would be on the right track. Yeah? But constantly hanging up in our thoughts yeah? about the future, you know, what we are going tomorrow or what we are going in half a year or what we are doing when we come home and so on and so on. How we deal with this problem, how we deal with that problem that hasn't arisen yet. Yeah? Have you ever noticed? Yeah? When you think about a problem, yeah? It hasn't arisen yet, the problem. It hasn't come. You haven't come into the situation. You just want to program yourself how how you're going to deal with this situation and that situation. I mean, and there's endless endless programming to do. Because none, none of the situations are equal. None of the situations are the same. But it's it seems to be more comfortable than investigation of pain. It's painful, yeah, I don't want to investigate. A body, you know, I mean, it's disgusting, I don't want to di- investigate. <clears throat> Reflection, I don't want to do it, because, I mean, it is, uh, yeah, it's bothersome, yeah. I don't want to remember, I just want to play. Play with thoughts, play with memories, play with this, play with images, yeah? All day long. Wasting our time, yeah? Because we don't put real effort into our practice. Don't, don't you never ask what is preventing you from doing some, some more serious practice, huh? You never ask that? Huh? Why the hell is nothing going on? Why is it not going forward? Huh? You don't ask that? What is hindering you? What are the hindrances? You don't ask that? Because you're not interested. Huh? This interest, the interest, you know, that keeps us going, that keeps us on the subject, you know, on the object, is, is not there. And if you, don't, if you are not interested, you know, if you just... <clears throat> dilly dallying th- through through the day or daydreaming, walking day, walking in daydreams through the day. You know, I mean, then one day passes, the next day passes, and nothing is happening. Huh? Open it up. Yeah? Open the body up and see. Yeah, and see how the anger comes up, huh? or irritation comes up, or disgust comes up. Yeah, a negative feeling. And then close it, you know, and see, you know, how a positive feeling comes. How how does it how does it work? We don't want to know because we don't like unpleasant feelings. Yeah, we run away from unpleasant feelings by doing this or doing that. All the time running. And aren't you tired of running away from it, yeah? I mean these feelings, you know, as long as you don't understand the cause, you know, and the root of it, yeah. 
You will not be able to run away from it because wherever you go, that's where they are. They follow you wherever you go. Only once you understand it, yeah, then you can get rid of them. Once you understand the logic behind all of it, you can get rid of it. But it seems like you don't like, you know, to become free. Being able to decide, no matter if it is painful or unpainful <clears throat> or pleasant, yeah, to decide the right thing. Because you don't see the right thing because you're driven by the pleasantness or the unpleasantness. Yeah? So you can never make the right decision. Is that clear? If you are driven by greed and hate, you cannot make the right decision. You don't like to, to sit longer because there's too much pain. Yeah? You don't like to investigate because there's too much disgust. Yeah? So we can't make the right decisions. Yeah? We can't make the right actions. And we can't, if we don't make the right actions, we can't get free. So get your act together, yeah, please. Yeah? It is for your own sake. I mean, you are not the body. Yeah? Please, understand that. You are not the body. However the body feels, it's not you, because you know the feelings. Yeah? And the chitta has enormous energy. I mean, it is energetic, you know, But the moment you identify with the body, I mean, it seems to be all, all, the, bo all the energy of the chitta is absorbed in the body. Yeah. It seems like that. So that's why you have to put some effort to do and withdraw. Yeah? Withdraw from the body, you know, go into the chitta and you see how powerful it is. Yeah. Cut your attachments to this body, you know, don't care, you know, I mean... Investigate this. Yeah? Investigate the feelings that arise with the body. Yeah? I mean, we have to keep the body alive. That's a, of course, yeah. And that's not what I mean. I don't care about. You know, I don't care about the feelings the body sent. Yeah, investigate them. Yeah? Do your work. Yeah, no matter how the body feels, because you are not the body. The chitta is something else, and the chitta has endless energy. Do you understand that, hopefully? Hmm? It's not you. These painful feelings is not you. Yeah? This weakness is not you. Yeah? Because you can see. How can it be you? Hmm? When you look at the person next to you, it's not you. I mean, that is clear for you. Hmm? Whatever you see, whatever you experience cannot be you. Because who is the one who experiences Who is the one who knows about all these things? That's the chitta, or the knowingness. That's the essence of the chitta. Get to know the essence of the chitta, and you can do that with samadhi. Yeah? Going, going into samadhi, upachara samadhi, apana samadhi. There you see the essence of the chitta. Upachara samadhi, not yet so clear, but in apana samadhi, I mean that's it. That's the only thing that is left, because the whole universe has disappeared. And all what you need to do is just just return. Yeah, I mean, just be, be determined. Just return back to the Buddha or back to the breath. And, you know, sooner or later you will come into one-pointedness or apana samadhi or deep state of samadhi. Yeah? And then you see the nature of the chitta is just this knowingness. Yeah? It doesn't know any object. Yeah? The moment it comes out, it knows object. Yeah? And then it gets defied by the kilesas that are hanging around. Yeah? That constantly tells us, ah, I'm this object, I'm in pain, I'm sick, I'm that, I'm that. Yeah? I'm angry, yeah? I'm disappointed, yeah? I'm tired. And you, yes, my Lord, yeah? 
You constantly say, yeah, this voice in your ear says, my Lord, you're right, my Lord, I'm too tired, I should go sleep. Yes, my Lord, I have no energy, my Lord, you're right, you know, I can't do anything. We just came out of the deep samadhi where we, where we had enormous energy. Yeah? And now we entangle ourselves with this this body or with this universe and then suddenly, you know, all our energy is instantly with withdrawn yeah? into these things. Yeah? Just like it flows out, you know, into all these things. Yeah? Just like a Pali word, asava. Asava means outflow. Yeah? Flows into this, it flows into that, you know, and in the end, you know, we don't have any energy. Yeah? Because all the energy, you know, has flown out into these material things of this universe. Yeah? So get to know, get to understand yeah, that you are not these things. Whatever you observe, there cannot be you. Yeah? Be it the lack of energy, there cannot be you. Yeah? Be, it, be it the body, it cannot be you. Yeah? Be it anger, it cannot be you. No. Be it fear, it cannot be you. Yeah? Investigate these things, what they are. Yeah? And do something. I mean, it's sad to see you in a state, you know, of slump, you know, Uh, 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 yeah. Pitying yourself is also the kilesas. Huh? Not telling yourself, oh, I don't have enough merit. Yeah. I mean, they make you believe anything, and you're so stupid to believe whatever they tell you. Yeah. I mean, by now you should have noticed this voice. Yeah. It's not you. It's KPC, Kilesa's Broadcasting Company, yeah? And they're just not, they're not very different from the media that we have in, in the West or here in Thailand, from the newspapers, from the TV stations, yeah? They're all KBC, Kilesa's Broadcasting Company, advertisement, yeah? Take this and you will be happy. Yeah, we have the same thing in advertisement. If you don't if you don't buy this you won't be happy yeah that's what advertisement tells us and that's the same thing yeah and that's a kilesa it's constantly in our own ears we don't need external advertisement we, we just fall for the internal advertisement yeah do this and you will be happy do that and you will be happy yeah and we still believe them every day Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm not well. Oh, I don't have energy. Oh, I'm lacking determination. I don't know what to do. Yeah? And we always say, yes, my Lord, you're right, my Lord, I should sleep. Yeah? I should lie down. Yeah? I should rest. Yeah? I should go and drink a coffee. Or I should do this. Yeah? Or maybe I should, yeah? maybe I should do this. Yeah? Maybe doing a new cage, yeah, or building this or building that. Yeah. Yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord, yeah. That is not the way how we gain freedom. You have to fight this Lord. You have to fight this voice. It's a KBC, Kilesa's Broadcasting Company. Remember, yeah, they tell you, yeah, and you say yes. That's where you fall. You've fallen for the tricks of the Kilesa. These things are not you. Yeah? Wake up. Yeah? Put some effort in your practice. Yeah? For your own sake, it's not for my sake. Oh, do you want to be slave forever? The slaves of Avicca. They just do say, yes, my Lord, yes, yeah. Huh? I should do this, I should do that, yeah. And there's no end of doing this and doing that. Yeah? I mean, we, it's not our first life, yeah. And how hard is it? I mean, we look from the beginning of our life to now, yeah. That's so tough, yeah. 
to grow up, yeah, to educate, to, to, to train this body, to form the thoughts, yeah, to, to train thinking, yeah, and then to earn our living. So tough job. Yeah. It's lots of dukkha. And it's not the first time, it's not the second time, it's not the hundredth time. I mean, we've been in this form, you know, for, for billions of lives. Have we lived? Be it in this realm, be it in that realm. I mean, we can't even remember. How often have we been monks? How often have we been yeah, nuns? Yeah? Endless time. And we are just going to steer for the next life. Yeah? And we don't know where we end up. Maybe we go first to heaven, because we practice, yeah? And after heaven we go to hell, because we have done bad things. And then we go back to heaven, because we have done good things. And then go back to hell, because we have done bad things. And then go up to heaven, I mean it's a shower of hot and cold. Is that what you like? Is that what they call roller coaster of life? Going up and going down. I mean, it's your decision. Make up your mind. Get your act together. And don't believe this KPC. Yeah? Don't believe them. Yeah? Say, no. Yeah? I mean, resist them. There you have to resist them. You have to resist this voice. Yeah? Okay, understand that? Yeah? <coughs> And with this, I end the talk here. Yeah.